the lecture hall of the high-tech Galactic Military Academy buzzed with anticipation. Cadets from various alien species filled the multipurpose hall, their eyes focused on the senior officer standing at the front. The officer, seasoned and knowledgeable, began the session with a commanding presence. Welcome, cadets. Today marks the third lecture in our series about species new to the galactic community. These are beings you are likely to encounter in your careers, though they are not yet part of the galactic senate. Our focus today is on a species known as humans. The cadets leaned in, eager to learn. The officer activated a large display, showing images and data about Earth and its inhabitants. Humans originate from a planet orbiting a single yellow star at the edge of our galaxy. Their world, while average in many respects, has produced a species with some intriguing characteristics. Physically, humans are unremarkable. They possess two upper limbs for manipulation and two lower limbs for locomotion. Unlike many primate-like species within the Senate, humans lack tails and claws. Instead, they have flat, dull nails and often rely on tools to interact with their environment. The officer paused, allowing the cadets to absorb this information. He then moved on to discuss sensory capabilities. Humans have relatively poor vision compared to many galactic species. Their hearing is also limited, particularly in the high-frequency range. For instance, they cannot detect the sounds made by the phalanx without the aid of translator units. It is important to remember this when interacting with them, as they might not hear or respond to sounds that are clear to us. A holographic image of a human appeared, rotating slowly to show different angles. The cadets took notes diligently. Humans are not particularly strong or durable for their size. Their intellect, while slightly above the median of Senate races, is not extraordinary. However, there is a crucial aspect of human behavior that you must understand, one that could be vital for your survival. Humans consume a variety of substances that other species would find lethal. The room grew silent as the cadets listened intently. I have personally witnessed humans consuming shellfish that turn bright red when cooked, a clear warning sign in many ecosystems. They eat berries from the deadly nightshade family and highly acidic fruits. They also drink ethanol recreationally, and some even set their beverages on fire before consuming them. But perhaps the most alarming is their consumption of capsaicin, the compound that makes peppers spicy. Some of their peppers have a heat rating that would be intolerable to many species. A murmur of disbelief spread through the hall. Therefore, cadets, I must strongly advise you against eating anything from the human world. The chances are high that even a small residue of their seasoning could be harmful or fatal to you. If offered food by a human, politely decline and offer something from your own world instead. It is better to be safe than to risk an encounter with their dangerous dietary habits. The officer concluded the lecture with a final warning. Take the time to study human cuisine through our archives. We have extensive documentation and videos showing their eating rituals. This knowledge might save your life one day. Now I encourage you to continue your research and prepare for any future encounters with humans. The cadets, now thoroughly intrigued and slightly apprehensive, filed out of the lecture hall, ready to delve deeper into their studies. The officer watched them go, knowing the importance of their understanding and fostering future interactions with this peculiar and potentially hazardous species. The day's lesson had left a lasting impression, setting the stage for the cadets' future interactions with humans and highlighting the importance of caution in the face of the unknown. The interrogation room in the Galactic Law Enforcement Facility was designed to be unnerving. Its sterile, metallic walls reflected the harsh, artificial lighting creating an atmosphere that was both cold and intimidating. Two alien officers stood over the table, frustration etched on their faces. Across from them sat Gregor, a prisoner with a defiant and confident demeanor. He knew the game well and was playing his part to perfection. The officers, seasoned in their roles, had tried every tactic in their repertoire to extract a confession from Gregor. Despite their efforts, he remained silent, his resolve unbroken. Hours had passed with little progress, and the frustration was palpable. He's not going to break, one of the interrogators muttered, pacing the room. We've tried everything. The other officer nodded in agreement, his antennae twitching in irritation. We need something different. 
something unconventional. At that moment, a door at the back of the room opened, and a new figure entered. The human officer, recently assigned to the station, had been observing the proceedings. His presence was an anomaly, a wild card in the otherwise methodical environment. Permission to suggest a new approach? The human officer asked, his voice calm and measured. The alien interrogators exchanged a skeptical glance. They had heard about the humans' unorthodox methods but were unsure of their efficacy. Still, they were out of options and nodded their approval. The human officer stepped forward, his expression thoughtful. I propose we use food as a psychological tactic. Food? One of the interrogators repeated, incredulous. How is that going to help? Humans have a unique relationship with food. We can use that to our advantage, the human officer explained. Let me handle this. Reluctantly, the alien officers agreed. They stepped back, allowing the human to take center stage. The human officer approached Gregor, who eyed him with curiosity and suspicion. Hello, Gregor, the human said, pulling a chair up to the table. Mind if I join you? Gregor shrugged, maintaining his stoic demeanor. Do as you wish. The human officer placed a small bag on the table and began to unpack its contents. He spoke casually, as if they were merely having a friendly conversation. I understand you've been giving my colleagues a hard time. That's your right, of course. But I thought we might try something different. From the bag, the human pulled out a container of food and a can of drink. The alien officers watched from the corner, their skepticism mingled with curiosity. Gregor's eyes followed the human's every move, wary of the unfamiliar ritual. I brought some food with me, the human said, opening the container to reveal a dish of spicy wings. The aroma filled the room, a blend of enticing and intimidating scents. Care to join me? Gregor hesitated, his resolve wavering slightly. The human officer's demeanor was disarming, almost friendly. It was a stark contrast to the harsh interrogations he had endured. No thanks, Gregor replied, trying to maintain his composure. The human officer shrugged and began to eat, savoring each bite. These are my favorite. Spicy, flavorful. They really pack a punch. As he ate, the human continued to talk, describing the food in detail. The alien officers watched, intrigued by the human's approach. Gregor, meanwhile, found himself increasingly drawn into the conversation despite his best efforts to resist. You see, Gregor, the human said between bites, food is more than just sustenance for humans. It's a comfort, a pleasure. It can evoke memories, emotions. It can even be a tool. Gregor's curiosity got the better of him. A tool for what? The human smiled, sensing an opening. For communication. For building connections. Even for persuasion. The conversation flowed naturally, the human's casual demeanor slowly breaking down Gregor's defenses. The food, with its enticing aroma and the human's enthusiastic descriptions, played a key role in this subtle dance. Eventually, Gregor's curiosity overcame his caution. All right, I'll try one, he said, reaching for a wing. As he took a bite, the human watched him closely. Gregor's eyes widened as the spicy flavor hit his senses. It was intense, almost overwhelming, but strangely enjoyable. The human's tactic was working. Over the next few minutes, the human officer continued to eat and talk, drawing Gregor into a deeper conversation. The alien interrogators, still observing, marveled at the effectiveness of the approach. Finally, the human officer leaned back, his meal finished. So, Gregor, we've had a nice chat. How about you tell me what really happened? Gregor hesitated, the last vestiges of his defiance crumbling. The human's unconventional method had done what hours of traditional interrogation could not. He sighed, leaning forward, ready to talk. The sterile, metallic walls of the interrogation room seemed to close in on Gregor as the human officer re-entered, this time carrying a small bag. The human's demeanor was casual, almost friendly, a stark contrast to the tension that had filled the room earlier. The alien interrogators watched from behind a transparent partition, their skepticism mixed with curiosity. Evening, Gregor, the human officer greeted, 
setting up a small table in the center of the room. Hope you don't mind if I join you for dinner. Gregor remained silent, his eyes narrowing as he watched the human unpack his bag. A variety of containers emerged, each emitting different aromas that filled the room. The human's casual approach was disconcerting, a sharp deviation from the intense questioning Gregor had endured so far. The human officer settled into his chair, opening a container to reveal a pile of spicy chicken wings. He lifted one, taking a deliberate bite, savoring the flavor. These are my favorite, he said, his tone conversational. Spicy, flavorful, just the right amount of kick. Gregor tried to ignore him, focusing his gaze on a spot on the wall. The human continued eating, describing each item in detail, not just the taste but the process of preparation, the cultural significance, and the peculiar human affinity for spicy foods. You know, the human mused, these wings are made with capsaicin. It's a chemical that gives them their heat. To us, it's a delightful sensation, but I hear it can be quite the experience for other species. The casual mention of capsaicin caught Gregor's attention. He knew of it from his studies, an irritant that could cause intense discomfort. Yet, here was the human, eating it with apparent pleasure. Gregor's initial dismissiveness began to waver, a sense of unease creeping in. The human officer continued, oblivious to Gregor's growing discomfort. He opened another container, releasing the pungent aroma of fermented vegetables. Kimchi, he announced with a grin. Fermented cabbage, a staple in some human diets. The fermentation process gives it a unique, strong flavor. Gregor shifted in his seat, his attention reluctantly drawn to the human's meal. The alien interrogators exchanged glances, noting the subtle change in Gregor's demeanor. The human's tactic was working, the psychological play of casually consuming what Gregor perceived as toxic substances was unsettling him. Would you like to try some? The human offered, holding out a piece of kimchi. Gregor recoiled slightly, shaking his head. No, thank you, he replied, his voice strained. The human shrugged, continuing to eat with relish. Suit yourself. More for me. As the meal progressed, the human reached for a small bottle, pouring a viscous, bright red sauce over the wings. The sharp, acrid scent filled the room, making Gregor wince. This is my special hot sauce, the human explained. A blend of the hottest peppers on earth. It's not for the faint-hearted. The alien's reaction was immediate. Gregor's eyes watered, his breathing quickened, and he struggled to maintain his composure. The human's nonchalant consumption of the intensely aromatic and spicy food was a sensory assault, breaking down Gregor's mental defenses. The human officer leaned back, a satisfied smile on his face as he finished his meal. You know, Gregor, he said, his tone shifting to one of casual menace. I could cook your meals for you if you'd like. I assure you, I have plenty of interesting recipes. Gregor's resolve crumbled. The thought of enduring such a meal was too much. He glanced toward the partition, where the alien interrogators stood, then back at the human. The psychological pressure had reached its peak. Stop, Gregor finally said, his voice breaking. I'll talk. Just keep him away from me and my food. The human officer nodded, his demeanor once again friendly and calm. Glad to hear it, Gregor. Let's have a proper conversation now. The interrogation room felt charged with tension as the human officer calmly finished his meal. Gregor sat across from him, visibly shaken, his defiance eroding with each passing moment. The alien interrogators watched intently from their observation point, ready to step in at any sign of breakthrough. The human officer, sensing Gregor's impending collapse, casually leaned back in his chair. You know, Gregor, he began, his voice steady and composed. I could take charge of preparing your meals from now on. Think of it as a way to save time, one less thing for the staff to worry about. Gregor's eyes widened in alarm. The mere thought of enduring another round of the human's culinary practices was too much. His mind flashed back to the overwhelming sensations he had just experienced, the searing heat of the spices, the pungent aroma that had invaded his senses. Desperation clawed at him. No. Gregor stammered, his voice cracking. Please, anything but that. 
The human officer raised an eyebrow, feigning ignorance. Oh? But I thought you might enjoy the variety. Humans are known for their unique flavors. Gregor's composure shattered. I'll talk, he blurted out, his voice rising in desperation. Just keep him away from me and my food. The human officer leaned forward, his expression serious. Are you sure, Gregor? You know what this means. Yes, Gregor insisted, his resolve gone. I'll tell you everything. With a nod, the human officer signaled the alien interrogators, who stepped into the room, ready to document Gregor's confession. The human leaned back, satisfied with the outcome of his unorthodox strategy. Gregor began to speak, his voice trembling as he recounted the details of his crimes. The alien officers recorded every word, their expressions a mix of relief and admiration for the human's effective, if unconventional, method. As Gregor's confession came to an end, the interrogators escorted him out of the room. The human officer remained seated, contemplating the events that had just transpired. One of the alien officers approached him, a look of respect on his face. Your approach was unexpected, the officer admitted, but undeniably effective. The human shrugged modestly. Sometimes, it's not about the tools you use but how you use them. The alien officer nodded, acknowledging the wisdom in the human's words. You've given us a new perspective on interrogation techniques. Your resilience and adaptability are truly remarkable. The human officer stood, ready to leave the room. It's all about understanding what makes each species tick, he said with a smile. And sometimes, a little creativity goes a long way. As the human officer walked out, the alien interrogators reflected on the day's events. The unique role humans played in the galactic community was becoming increasingly clear. Their unpredictability and innovative approaches were assets that could turn the tide in situations where traditional methods failed. In the corridors of the Galactic Law Enforcement Facility, the human officer's success became a topic of discussion. His ability to leverage psychological tactics through something as simple as food had demonstrated the power of unconventional thinking. It was a lesson in adaptability and the importance of considering new perspectives. The human officer's name would be remembered, not just for his actions but for the insight he brought to the table. The galaxy was vast, and its inhabitants diverse, but moments like these showcased the value of every species' unique contributions.